Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Tackle Productions. Today I'm Bankrupt being joined once again by Jimmy, Nick, and Fluff. Damn, the Nick slander already out, bro. It doesn't stop. What the hell? Well, Nick, Nick, why are you here? Where's Jake? Why don't we have Jake? Where's Jake? I like Jake better. Keep mind. I don't like Jake <laughs> better, but... Keep in mind, there's buttons down below. Feel free to click there for a reason. Today's matchup, we got uh, Matt bringing back... The Soul Striker Gogeta deck. Unfortunately, Matt could not be here for commentary, so we're going to kind of go without him. We've we've all kind of played against so we kind of got an idea what he's going for and the changes he's made. And he's taking on Nick, who has brought in Cell Surge. This is why I'm not in the uh, final rounds. Oh, this is why you're not. Because it's hand control. You didn't even play me. <laughs> <laughs> um, what the hell? Let's take it away. So we got... Hand control versus a deck that typically draws a lot. So let's just see how this kind of fares out. I like how you, you that that statement was actually a question versus a deck that typically I, draws a so, lot. So true be told, I don't know how the interactions goes throughout this deck. I know when I play Soul Striker, it draws a lot. I don't know how the Gogeta engine technically works, and I know you, both you and Jimmy have helped. Not yeah, both you and Jimmy has helped Matt kind of build the deck. I think right. Or is it uh, uh, Nick and Jimmy? Uh, yeah, I, I've uh, given him a hand on building it and uh, kind of rounding out numbers. Uh, the deck does draw quite a bit just inherently off of the leader's power. Uh, and a lot of the cards do replace themselves. Uh, but he doesn't run any of like the draw monkeys and stuff like that that you would see in the more popular Soul Striker builds. Uh, it's pretty much just mono blue. That's probably for he wants to keep it consistent, right? But you can just uh, combo those yeah, off and just much. use them as free energy. I mean, free draws, pretty much. Yeah, I, I think his approach to the deck is that he really just wants to play the Gogeta package, and he wants the deck to play it well. And it is a fantastic package for the deck, uh, and it can do a lot of uh, really interesting things alongside having just the standard good. Soul Striker cards that are in pretty much every Soul Striker build. Also, is he awakened? <laughs> uh, he is, certainly is. <laughs> so, Matt isn't really here to commentary on how it felt like going against hand control. So, Nick, going against um, Soul Striker, thoughts? I wasn't worried. That's about it. Um, <clears throat> most blue decks just lack inherent draw power. Um, they do have good defensive capabilities, but drawing is usually where they struggle the most. So I wasn't really worried about what he was going to do. Um, and as you see in this game, uh, as it goes on, he hesitates quite a bit in, in the matchup. Um, I just think he just hasn't had much practice against hand control. Because um, I'm, I'm really the only one that plays it around the shop. I mean, Bancroft, you dabble from time to time. But... Um, I don't play the deck that often, or at least the style that often, just every now and then. Um, but the reason I brought it this time is I pulled the uh, Wicked Saiyans SCR, so I wanted to see how it worked in the deck. I was trying that out on Untap and stuff, and I wanted to see how it worked. Um, but funny enough, I actually didn't see it all night. So. I was about to ask you <laughs> if you get a chance to use it or not. Sure didn't. So, um, while round uh, turn two is kind of going the works, we all know Soul Tracker doesn't really do much on turn two. Because you can't really get the free awaken or the quick awaken until turn three. Let's talk about Wicked Saints a little bit. Um, there's some interesting things going around right now. Do you guys want to talk about that? What specifically? Oh, the uh, how to play it and, and uh, how to apparently not play it. Uh, okay, so you're referring to the, uh, the choose for ruling. Uh, where there have been a lot of confusion on if it's a uh, your opponent must fulfill as much as possible. So let's say, because if you don't know what the card says, that your opponent must tap four cards, that's any card on their field, uh, and the card goes to the drop area. Otherwise, it comes into play, and then they discard two cards out of their hand. Uh, so there's been a lot of confusion based on, is that tap four fulfill as much as possible? So that 
if you only had, say, two energy open, could you tap the two energy and make the card not come into play? Uh, and there's been a lot of opinions and stuff going back and forth. There's a page on the Bandai site that says one thing, but then there are judges that are calling it uh, that it's fulfilled as much as possible. Uh, and uh, it, it's a dumb ruling either way because there are cards in the past that have had the same text that's fulfilled fulfill as much as possible. Uh, so it, it, it's just weird all around. Until something official comes from Bandai, I've said that at the shop we just play it as your opponent must tap four. If they don't have four to tap, you play it out. So with that being said, for any future instances on our channel, while this car is still kind of in the debate, we'll be playing it that way. And I think a lot of it breaks down to where it does say your opponent may choose four, not up to, which gives the idea that they have to choose four cards to even get that trigger, in our, in my opinion at least. And then if they switch them, which is them is typically used in a plural term, typically. Um, yeah, that's how we're going to play it. Sure. If you have comments about that, put it down below. But I feel like, and I'm not sure about anyone else in the, in the group, I feel like that's what it was intended to be and not trying to, quote unquote, cheese it a different way or pretty much devalue the card entirely. It's, it's, it's basic English comprehension, right? And I think every TCG goes through this point where... There's a there's a dire need in the game for problem solving card text because a lot of people will try to swing wordings on cards to fit themselves favorably, um, and every game goes through this that usually results in what's known as problem solving card text being implemented. So we're just in the the age. It's kind of like the terrible threes of a card game, but we're in the age where we desperately need it. We don't have it yet but people are overanalyzing the text on cards instead of going by the basic English meaning of the sentence, right? They're trying to add commas and add, you know, unspoken things that aren't in the text as a way to interpret it. And until we get problem solving card text that kind of standardizes the way effects are worded versus costs versus intention, that's not going to change. So you just got to kind of bear with this phase of a card game. So going back to the game itself, I see Nick, you've decided to awaken, which in my opinion feels a little bit early, but knowing that rebirth of justice is a card or even the four drop of boonies or, um, Murray chimps. Is that why you decided to awaken ahead of time? So when I when I play Cell Surge, my, my usually I only can turn three regardless of what I have. Um, I just like having the energy back for defensive play on when I drop the uh, Dark Lily uh, Unison. Um, depending on what the opponent's hand is at, um, I'll either just push more with hand control by popping a rebrand if I have one in the drop, um, which generally I do because I can influence my drop area really heavily. Um, or I'll keep it open for like a Bupo if the opponent's going to try to push a little bit. Um, but you can see in this game, Matt's not really playing anything at this point. Um, he drops the Marisham right here, but that's the second card he's played the whole game. So his hand was actually a lot bigger than most people's because most people decide to just play through it and then play their turns out and they play battle cards and that's when they start to dwindle their hands. So his hand was semi-healthy by this point in the game. So I didn't know what what he was going to play. Um, but the Murray Trim's a really good really good spot in this. Um, but I think, yeah, he just activated the main on it. And I don't know if the camera picked it up, but it hit um, Dark Belly Unison. So he didn't get the dual attack effect. <laughs> and then I defended with... Um, with EDK because he had attacked the leader, which at the end of the game, we talked about it. It would have been better for him to swing at the Dark Bowler Unison because I wouldn't have been able to defend it with the EDK. And it was only at three markers at the time. So it would have been a lot more beneficial for him to just clear that. And that would have, that would have really put a hindrance on the pressure I was able to put on him. Combined that the Unison swing potentially to, to um, the Dark Broly could have wiped it then. Though I feel like it's at four markers right now. 
from what I'm looking at? Um, I think so. It's hard to see. I can't see it that well. Um, but it, it wasn't as high as I'd like it to have been. And with the Murray Chim providing that pressure, yeah, he could have he could have cleared it that turn. Um, granted, it wouldn't have pushed anything into my life, but he didn't even hit my life anyway. So it would have been better for him to just clear the unison to stop my stop my pressure. And if I'm correct, Dark Broly's uh, was it is it minus two that chooses one of your opponent's battle cards as well? Uh, no, it's the plus two. Plus two. That's what. Okay. Um, and Merchant has barriers, so he can't really be affected by that, which is pretty nice choice um, for his field choice on that one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the only thing that it would have done would have been to get rid of his cards in hand, which I mean, still is pertinent. I mean, making him lose his hand is what I want to do, but I just don't get the full value of the Dark Broly. But if he doesn't have cards in his hand to defend, I, I can just swing at whatever I want, essentially, with Dark Broly. Since it's so tall, I don't even really need a combo to... Yeah, it's a 20k, if I'm it, correct. It is, yeah. So I can just swing with it happily and then not even have to worry about anything. Chose to go with the negate, which is fair. Um, we see Matt does have the uh, Gotenks in his hand, the 4-drop, which the flecked barrier, I think, and if you were to counter stuff happens yeah if I were to counter he would uh, bounce all cards back to my hand ignoring barrier um, which I mean I don't play too many battle cards um, unless it's on my own terms like in this case I played the surprise attack Frieza for free so at the end of the day I'm not losing too much if he bounces that back for instance um, but it is one of my main pressure pieces I want to deny as much resources as possible so that's why I go into the into the crit and then here I play the uh, Spirit Bomb Goku, which is one of my tech choices in the deck. I mean, I like it a lot. Um, the Spirit Boost is really nice, especially if you're going for game with it. Um, you Spirit Boost as many markers as you want and give your leader or give that card plus five for each marker you remove. And then if you remove two or more, it gains Double Strike, which is what I do here. I think I use it to clear or markers from the Unison because I don't want him drawing from the Unison. Yeah, his use is currently sitting at two markers, so you're about to go into the, I think, double strike 15k uh, Xeno Frieza? Correct. And I did make a change to this. Um, I was I was only running two of the Xeno Frieza. I added a third one in. Um, makes the deck list 53, and doesn't hurt it too much, because there's been times when I've done the all effect and I've missed Xeno Frieza so I just wanted to get that consistency piece in there and it it's worked and I mean it helps with the leaders um, unawaken activate mains just look top 5 add whatever you want to your hand so you kind of get an idea of what's in your deck currently and get to add something to your hand that is important now exactly and then here I do the uh, do the surge effect for Cell um, I did the first one where if he plays a battle card it has to be played in uh, rest mode I didn't know what the one card in his hand was at the time and I didn't want to take any pressure uh, especially if it was a Murray Chim because he could have just gone for game with it if he wanted to um, so I took the safe route and whatever he plays just is not a threat to me anymore now I know if um, you play for the Paragus correct yeah out of curiosity, with adding a third uh, Xeno Frieza, what's the mindset potentially doing a 2 2 split between uh, Gohan and Paragus so you could add cards back to your deck if you need it to? Uh, which Gohan? Uh, the draw two, the bottom one. No, sorry, you bottom one, the draw two. So you could put the oh, Frieza's uh, back the in your thing. deck. That wouldn't be bad. I mean, the Xeno Frieza plays from hand or deck, so it's not the end of the oh, world. That's right, I forgot about it. It is hand or deck. Yeah, so it's not the end of the world if I have it in hand. And then, But I mean, it would be good I'd get more value out of it, so it wouldn't be bad. Um, I just like the Paragus because you get to draw before doing the before doing the discard effect. Um, and you want to... There's so many pieces that in this deck that could not help you in the battle step. So it's nice to be able to get rid of those when you need to. 
Cell Surge is such a good meta call against Soul Striker in general. Um, Blue doesn't really have a lot of early early aggro or early ways to pressure. So you're really just able to set up and for the most part, just punish his entire pretty much now, anytime he's going to get cards in his hand, he's immediately going to lose them. And like you all are seeing here, Matt's now to zero cards in hand. Cell surge can just pressure, take a card, pressure, take a card, pressure, take a card. I think you still got Ruby in your uh, drop, don't you? I do. Um, I was debating whether or not I wanted to use it. Um, I had so much pressure on board that it that it, I, I didn't know if I wanted to do it or not. But in this case, I do the second effect for Cell Surge, where I KO a card and pick a card out of his hand and discard it. But in this case, it was a barrier card, so I couldn't pick it. So I still got to wipe his hand out before going for game. So to talk a little bit about like cell surge tech, uh, I see one of the cards in your energy is the one drop crit Gohan. Why do you choose that over something like Black Mass Saiyan? Especially for uh, shit. The mo more of the time I charge it than anything. Honestly, um, it's good if the opponent's not swinging at me to kind of get down to four life for my super combos to be live. Um, but I just like the crit pressure from time to time. Um, I'd rather deny the resource in the early game than and then put some type of pressure on them than defending from them possibly playing Deborah because no one's going to main deck Deborah. I mean, why would you? Um, especially if, it's like if your opponent decides, hey, I'm not going to play Cell Surge at all, then you have a card in your deck that's literally dead. So it's not worth an invest of ones. Invest of three, yeah, absolutely, but not in this area. With that being said, thank you all for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Keep in mind there's buttons down below and on the screen while Fluff does the outro. That was very difficult to prepare for in a best of one because like Nick was saying, you have to include cards that are dead to basically every other matchup that you'll come across except for like maybe red or a non-hand control green deck, I guess. But yeah, it's just a hard one to get through. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let us know in the comments below if there's anything that you want to see. Click on these videos. Hopefully it's something new that you haven't had a chance to listen to yet. So anyways, read your card, know your plays. Let us make the mistakes so that you don't have to. And as always, fluff out.